Have you heard of the creator curse? Probably not, because I just made it up. It's a Jessica-ism, as is most things that come out of my mouth. <laughs> but this is a really important one. If you want to be a creator, are a creator, like have ever dreamed of being a creator, used to be a creator, like whatevs, okay? we've got to talk about the creator curse because it's really darn important. So it's kind of appropriate that I'm wearing my Sony sweatshirt when I'm gonna talk about going to Sony condo, uh, not just Sony condo, so you know, whatever. But y'all know, I went to a couple of different creator-esque events this year. I went to Sony condo and then I also went to Vid Summit. So both of those are like video creator-y things. And the one common message that kept coming up in conversation that people kept talking about, like even if I wasn't in that conversation, that like sessions were being talked about. Like the one thing, the one through line through both of these conferences and like anytime I talk to creators is this idea that nobody in the creative space likes to be boxed in and everybody wants to be doing something different than what they're actually doing. So like one day at Sony Condo, we were sitting around and having lunch and like, I didn't know a lot of people there. I knew Katie Steckley and that was kind of it. And I sat down at this table and it was like complete strangers. And there was someone who was like a food blogger or not blogger, but you know, food content creator. And then there was like a tech content creator. And then there was like Katie and I, and then there was several people. Okay. And every single person at that table said something of the nature of like, I wish I could just go outside my niche. Like I, I wish I didn't just have to talk about food. I wish I didn't just have to talk about tech. I wish I didn't just have to talk about business. I'm going to do this thing with this brand I've already created so that I can go over here and be more creative. Like literally everyone in that circle. And it wasn't just that circle. I mean, it was like all the circles, right? And then beyond these like in-person events, you see people here on YouTube, especially and TikTok and things like that, making these declarations that they don't just want to do X, Y, and Z anymore. I've done it, right? Like I've been on this channel and been like, I don't just want to talk about business anymore. I don't just want to talk about digital products. I don't just want to do this. I want to embrace the creator side of me, right? Like I want to be a creator. And like just last week, Millie did a whole video about how she's going to make a change and she's not just going to do how-to content and she wants to be more creative with her content and all the things. Yesterday, my girl Desiree Martinez sent me a video of someone who was quitting YouTube, like a really big channel that was like quitting YouTube. And then on the homepage of my YouTube channel was another video about like why all these big people are quitting YouTube. And I love to follow people in the, um, like the photography videography space because I love to like hone that skill. And Maddie Hapoya, who um, is someone that I have loved to watch, who talks about photography and videography, he's good friends with Peter McKinnon, like all of these things, he is quitting YouTube. And what it really comes down to, like what the, what the big thing comes down to is that creators want to be creative and creators want to create whatever creators want to create. They don't want to create whatever box they're in. And so what ends up happening with all of these creators is that inevitably they end up being boxed in either because they did it on purpose, the algorithm kind of boxed them in, their content unintentionally boxed them in or something. And because of the way the algorithms are set up, boxing yourself in is a good thing. That's how you're gonna grow. If you want to grow on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or tick, like whatever, you need to have a pretty solid like niche, right? And if you wanna grow really fast, you need to have that. But creators and true creative people don't want that. They don't wanna be boxed in. I know for me, the thought of being boxed in makes me feel claustrophobic and I don't like it. So I mentioned my girl, Desiree Martinez, but she and I have had extensive conversations about this. And it's, it's like this really interesting thing to watch from an outsider, but also as a creator to say like, it is, it is a very common thing for creators to get started creating a certain type of content, to chase the algorithm, to chase the views, to chase the subscribers, to really want to grow and then box themselves in and then want to shift away from that type of content. It's what happened when I put contributors on this channel. I was so burnt out talking about business that I was like, just put other people on there talking about it. I will go over here and talk about something else. And I started like a more creative channel that I couldn't maintain because 
there was no structure to it. But I think creators have this constant need to evolve and change, which is not a bad thing. But that is constantly battling the algorithms and the platforms that reward us for being boxed in. So this, my friends, is what we're gonna coin the creator curse. How do we get out of it? I, I don't know. I can't tell you that. I have no idea. I do think though that the days of vlogging or more lifestyle content on platforms like YouTube is going to come back because of this craved nature from creators that we don't just want to be talking about one thing and we want to incorporate our entire lives into what we put out on the internet. But like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a psychic. It's really interesting because the conversation then goes to, do we as creators have conversations with the platforms so that they understand what we want as creators and they change their platforms? But I don't think that's the answer because I think the platforms are set up for us to be creative and not have to be stuck in a box, or at least YouTube and TikTok are. We just have to find that like magic piece. And that magic piece is a through line. It's just a through line. It's a through line of who's going to enjoy watching all of our content, right? That's it. I think if we can find that, then the algorithm will continue to do its job of pairing the right viewer with the right content, and it will understand what your content is but we have to figure out what that through line is so that the people who are subscribing, the people who find one video also care about our next video and also care about our next video because that's like, as much as we want to be all over the place, that's not conducive to a viewer, right? Like that's not what people want. So y'all know I love Peter McKinnon, right? We've talked about this. We've had discussions about this. Okay. And I would watch a video of Peter McKinnon gutting a fish and I, don't necessarily spend my time watching videos of people getting fish. But the reason is he knows how to tell a story and the beauty of his content is what I identify with. A lot of times he's talking to photographers and I'm not a photographer. I am a hobbyist photographer, but like that's not what I do for a living and that's not what I want to do for a living. And so a lot of his content is kind of not for me. And he's also like, a dude who talks about dude centric things like riding his little ATV situations and flying the drones and, you know, going backpacking and like all of this stuff that I don't really identify with. But whether he knows it or not, he's created a through line of people who appreciate good storytelling and creativity in his content. And as long as those two things are present, in any piece of content he does, people are gonna watch it. So we as creators have to figure out what that through line is to enable us to talk about whatever the heck we wanna talk about, but still have an audience who wants to watch all of our content. So I was scrolling Instagram last night, probably like right before I was going to bed or whatever, and uh, this person came up that I do not know, and I will never find her again. Um, <laughs> actually, I probably will. The algorithm will probably serve her back up to me, but. I don't know her name or how to credit her, and I'm sorry for that. It wasn't my idea, let's just put it that way. Um, but I saw this reel, and it was this girl saying, hey creators, talk about whatever the heck you wanna talk about. Do it. The right viewer, the right brands, the right things will land in your lap, I promise. And I think that is the way we're going, but the problem is that if you did not start your YouTube channel, your TikTok, your Instagram, in that way, if you didn't start it more broad, it's hard to broaden out. The algorithm kind of punishes you for that. So like for me here on my channel, I have broadened out a lot. I used to just talk about like just these little things, right? And sometimes the little thing would change. Like I, I would go through stands where I would just talk about sales funnels and email marketing. And then it would be like digital products and courses and affiliate marketing. And I would change what those little things were, but I was just boxed into those little things. And now I kind of am broader in the more creator centric space, which is definitely what I wanted to do, but I'd like to be even more broad. Like if I want to put up a vlog of me doing something, I want y'all to want to watch it. But because most of my subscribers have come in through my informational content, 
y'all are going to be like, I don't want to watch this. This is not what I subscribed for. And, and rightfully so, like that's okay. So it's really hard to be specific and niche down and then broaden out. And I think it's harder on YouTube than any other platform, but I think we can do it. I think we just have to be okay with the algorithm not loving it for like a few minutes and okay with maybe our views or whatever going down for a little bit. And while I don't watch all of her content, I feel like Katherine Manning is a really good example of this. Katherine rose to YouTube stardom as a how-to channel, as a how to grow on YouTube channel. Like all of her most popular videos are in that realm in some way. And then she started a vlog channel on the side and, um, you know, I don't, I didn't really watch her vlog channel, but I think it was like home decor and remodeling and things like that. And then she decided I'm not doing this on the vlog channel. I'm just taking back over my main channel. I'm going to put all that on there and I'm going to go. And it's been really cool to watch her stick with that. Let's put that that way. Because I think most people would have given up. I think most people would have been like, oh my gosh, my views are down. I'm not having any videos just completely go viral anymore. I'm not growing a ton. I think most people would have given up, but she hasn't, she stuck with it. And now she's to the point where all of her videos get a really good amount of views. And while still her most popular videos are all of her tutorial businessy based videos, She's done a really good job of doing that. And a lot of that was just sticking with it. And I'm not saying that most of us want to go out here and switch from how to content to like home decor content. That's not what I mean. I just mean that like, if we want to broaden out, it is possible. We just have to be willing to stick with it because I think the algorithm will eventually figure it out. So if you are not yet a creator and you're already struggling with the creator curse, like, Oh, I want to create content about all the things or you're a creator and you're like me and you're struggling with it and you're like, oh, I want to create all the things, but I've niched myself into this box. I think we can do this. I think we can break the creator curse. I think we can do it. I think we can do the more broad content. I think we just have to figure out what that through line is. Is it that people absolutely love our creativity and our storytelling like Peter McKinnon? Is it that all of our videos are pretty relevant to the same group of people, like it's all moms? Or is it that our all of our content is relevant to an age group or something like that? Is it, like what is it that makes all of your content watchable by all of your subscribers? And then you can kind of, you know, do other things. So uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the creator curse. Do you feel this way? Is this something you feel like? I feel like if you don't, feel this way, you don't feel stifled in some way by your niche or the box you've put yourself in or the algorithms put, your in, put you in, then you've landed on the perfect thing for you from the jump. But I think a lot of us struggle so hard here and I know we do because I've had these conversations all freaking year. So I'd love to have more conversations in the comments. I guess this is just me saying find a through line. I think that's how we break this curse. And also you're not alone <laughs> if this is how you feel.